Now that the uh, power steering job was just finished and the installation of a magnifying filter, it's time to bleed the uh, entire brake system as well as rotate the tires because they haven't been done. And just like with the F-250, when I bled its brakes, I'm going to use the uh, Motive Products Power Bleeder. So I've already got a uh, wrench on the bleeder screw and a uh, catch bottle for the old fluid. And the uh, service manual calls for the right rear, left front, left rear, right front for the bleeding sequence. And um, here's the uh, container all hooked up to the master cylinder applying about a um, little under 10 pounds of force and what that's going to do is it's going to force all that fluid all through the master cylinder, all through the lines and with any luck the um, ABS module, that's the main thing I'm concerned about is saving that because that's pretty expensive and the book does call for um, a special procedure to run this pump prior to bleeding in the conventional sense, but it requires a special computer diagnostic tool to hook up to the 50-pin harness in there, which I don't have. So I'm going to go ahead and take a chance and bleed the system anyway. The book said if it's not done like that, you could get air in the system, but looking at the way the system is designed, I'm not sure how there could be any chance of air getting in here. Everything is, a cl is completely closed. Um, but worst that will happen is, as I... Uh, We'll have a spongy puddle afterwards with clean fluid, and I'll just go to the dealer and um, let them bleed the brakes with the uh, proper tool. Worst things have happened. I'd rather try it, just give it a shot, and get clean fluid in there. And another thing that I'm doing is I don't have any fluid in this bottle, and you're supposed to have some fluid in here. I'm using this just strictly to supply a controlled amount of air or pressure on the system. Because last time I did this on the um, F-250, I followed instructions and had fluid in here, but I noticed that there was always air bubbles all throughout the hose. I didn't see any air in the actual fluid reservoir, but I always saw air bubbles in the hose. And um, I just want to make sure that I don't, get any, I don't force any air through here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep pressure on this, and I'll watch the fluid level, and as that fluid level gets down to a critical minimum value, I'm going to release the pressure, take all this off, and keep adding fluid in. And that way I'll know for sure that there's no air getting into the system whatsoever. And so now we'll uh, begin the bleeding process. And it takes a while. By the way, these are the original 17-year-old 1995 brake pads. Still got a lot of life left on them. Kind of amazing. And the original 17-year-old Michelin XGT4 tires, which also have a lot of life left in them. I've never driven on 17-year-old tires, but they're not that bad, actually. They're not uh, checked or anything. Usually what messes tires up after just due to aging is the sunlight dries out the rubber. You get all kinds of deep cracks in there and everything, and the tires ruined. These tires, even though they're old, are in good shape. But I still want to rotate them because I don't think that's ever been done. And I have a perfect opportunity to rotate them now. So, we'll just uh, crack a bleeder open. You want to turn it counterclockwise and you can start to see the fluid running out, hopefully. Into this bottle here. And it is looking pretty dark, which is just what I expected. I'm going to go ahead and let that run, and um, what I'll do is take what I captured and put it in these uh, clear jars just like I did before so we can kind of get a before and after of um, the brake system. As you can see the fluid is coming right on down, going into that bottle, and um, just because the car has, uh, let's see, less than 12,000 miles, it still doesn't mean that all the fluids are in good shape. Brake fluid will absorb water over time anyway, and you can see just how dark and cruddy that is. So it's very important, especially with um, how much these ABS 
and traction control modules cost to uh, go ahead and run fresh fluid through there. So I'm going to go ahead and let that drain out and then I'll move to the uh, left front and we'll see what we have. This procedure is uh, working out quite well actually, um, just using this as a pressure vessel and you can already see the fluid in the reservoir getting much cleaner. I'm still working on the uh, right rear caliper and that's the stuff that's coming out. That's just as dark as motor oil and it's still coming out that dark. It's not as bad as it was on the F-250, you can sort of see through it. The F-250 had 155,000 miles and this is 12,000 mile fluid but it's 17 years old. There's not a lot of particulate in there, but it just definitely is worn out. So I'm going to keep on bleeding and um, see how much more fluid I can get out of that thing. Okay, I got all the uh, all four corners of the brake system bled and got the uh, tires rotated. I just did a uh, back to front on both sides. And that brake fluid looks worlds apart from what it looked like before. Nice and clean, looks like new, just like the rest of the car should look, with only uh, a little bit less than uh, 12,000 miles. And there's what the old fluid looked like, just absolutely horrible. That fluid there came from the uh, rear system, and then this fluid up here came from the front system, which doesn't seem to be as bad. You can see a little you can still see through it but it's still not quite as good as brand new stuff so anyway I feel really good about getting um, all brand new fluid through here and then uh, especially through the uh, ABS hydraulic control module and uh, I don't have to worry about the master cylinder or uh, brake calipers leaking, pistons getting seized, all that kind of stuff so you really can save yourself a whole lot of money and aggravation just by bleeding your brake system every couple of years it takes about maybe an hour and a half to two hours depending on what kind of car you have but definitely worth doing and so that basically completes all the um, prep work I had to do it's uh, for this car I know there have been a lot of videos that seem to be redundant about changing all the fluids on various cars and stuff but I had about 17 years of maintenance to catch up on this particular Crown Victoria because the only thing done to it was oil changes. Everything else was neglected. The coolant, the transmission fluid, the rear axle, all that stuff neglected. Even the air filter was original. So uh, 17 years of catching up to do just in a few days wasn't really all that bad. And i um, happy to report that uh, the brake bleeding procedure that I did worked out just fine. I did not have to have a special tool to energize the ABS hydraulic control module. Um, and I think the reason why the method I used worked is because no part of the system at any time was cracked open or replaced. Like a brake hose or a brake caliper or master cylinder or anything. So there really wasn't anywhere or any opportunity for any air to get into the system in the first place. So I think that worked out really well, but the um, story might be different if I ever had to replace any of the components or anything I might have to take it to a shop to get bled but so far so good